do you do at Arcteryx? I'm the vice president of circular programming at Arcteryx. Do you think the, the size of your company impacts the production size of your brand? It does to a degree. I would say that the model that we started with certainly was directly attributed to the number of units we sold represented the amount of product that we had to make or that or how we were going to grow. I would say now though we're looking at it a little bit differently because um, we're really um, enforcing our sustainability initiatives. So we're thinking about how we decouple a linear model, which is very traditional, one-to-one -one sales equals how you're going to grow from a ratio perspective, toward a circular program model, which essentially enables us to either think about designing for repairability or designing for upcycling, um, so jackets that maybe last a lot longer. Um, so we're really thinking a lot more about durability. We're thinking about other services and ways we can um, encourage our business to still grow, but without it being really directly one-to-one -one attributed to um, making X number of jackets equals this much in sales, which is kind of an old school way of thinking. Have you noticed any changes in the style of your products from when you first started at Acteryx to now? I've seen an evolution, certainly. I think, you know, the way we design is really um, focused on the core outdoor mountain environment. So we're thinking very much from a technical perspective, first and foremost. And then we also want it to look good, but there's a very specific reason why the pockets are where they're placed for a climbing jacket, um, like Napoleon style zippers versus like regular zipper or zippers. Um, and that tends to throw people off when they see it on the street because they think of the pockets might be out of place. But in fact, with a climbing harness, that's exactly where the pockets need to go. So, um, so there's been an evolution and then we've definitely made some changes inside of our women's fit um, to be a lot more inclusive. We're thinking a lot about genderless propositions as well and being more inclusive overall. So that's huge. Um, and you know, I've led some initiatives around collaborations um, with Jill Sander and Palace so those were definitely much more style plus tech combined, and those were really fun. But 100% our jackets have to be, first and foremost, be super technical and, um, you know, ensure that they're performative above all else. Do you think that your brand is more style based or athletic wear based? Um, I think, yeah, I mean, I probably answered some of that in the last question, but we're definitely more outdoor performance based is where we stand. Um, we are rooted very much more in climb, um, ski and snowboarding, and in trail. So everything from hiking to running, and that's what we focus all of our energy into. Has your brand changed the look of its products to follow trends or has it stuck to its original style? We've evolved. I wouldn't say we follow trend. I think we're the antithesis of trend. We've been trendy as of as of late um, because there's been a real uh, resurgence in outdoor styling with COVID um, and as such it's meant that our business has grown and it's become kind of like gore core has become a trend inside of um, the fashion industry but it hasn't adjusted how we approach our product we people have caught on to our designs that already existed from the past and they've attributed or appropriated those into their own wardrobes but at the end of the day you know, we still are who we are and we don't look to change that to follow any trend. What do you do at Strike Movement? I'm the founder at Strike Movement and I'm also the uh, design director. Do you think that the size of your company impacts the production size of your brand? It definitely does. Um, obviously, the bigger you are, the more products you produce. Do you think that your brand is more style based or more athletic wear based? Uh, we're definitely athletic and utility based, but we pay attention to trend when it comes to color and fits. Have you noticed any changes in the style of your products from when you first started your company to now? Uh, yes, I'd say that from a design direction standpoint, more brands have kind of come to this cleaner athletic look than uh, when we originally started. Has your brand changed the look of its products to follow trends or has it stuck to its original style? We, for the most part, we've stuck to our original style of clean, 
utility-based athletics. What do you do at Neon Denim Brand? I'm the founder and director. Do you think that the size of your company impacts the production size of your brand? Right now, we've got a pretty large team in, in Asia that helps out um, do all of our development work. And then we've got a team here in Vancouver, about four guys. So yeah, it does affect it as, uh, you know, can't travel and stuff right now either. Um, so yeah, we, we, we look to hire some more people here in Vancouver to help out more. Have you noticed any changes in the style of your products from when you first started working on your company to now? Yes, there's still been a lot of change just because we are such a new brand as of uh, about two years old. And uh, right now we're still just figuring out our fits and feels and, and understanding. So there is a lot of change going on season to season right now. Has, has your brand changed the look of its products to follow trends or has it stuck to its original style? Um, we do have some core styles that we would kind of run all year long but yeah we do a lot of changes seasonally because we are more of a fashion denim brand in a sense so we got to kind of keep up with trends and, and what's happening on the streets 